Hey everybody, welcome back. Now we're going to try to tackle scenario number three. Uh, still, again, as a fair warning, just in case you skipped the last, I'll stop providing these warnings, but um, we are going to be playing with a level five Void Warden and a level five Red Guard. So spoilers for level five Void Warden and level five Red Guard. The reason why I'm going to mention this one here one last time is simply because I know like people can pick and choose the scenario based off of like the scenario number that they haven't been spoiled. And it's definitely possible that someone, for example, wouldn't have wanted to watch scenario 39, but certainly would watch scenario three. Um, but anyway, so fair warning, scenario three with Void Warden and Red Guard, level five plus. Okay, so where are we at? So scenario three is a very difficult scenario. It's hilarious that it's the third, third scenario in Gloomhaven. And despite that, it is one of the more difficult by a significant margin. It is also imbalanced in a three-player party. A uh, three-player party makes this a lot harder than a two or four-player party, which is sort of hilarious. Since already this is going to be, I wouldn't say nearly impossible, but highly difficult for us with our characters, like, again, with level five and four characters placing, playing against level six monsters without having imbalanced enhancements or even good items or anything like that. Um, so to begin with, it's a bit too hard for us, and a, make, being in a three-player party makes this harder than it should be otherwise. Uh, so the reason for that is in a two-player party, you spawn a, a monster back, I mean, an enemy here every other round. In a three- and four-player party, you spawn a monster, an enemy every round. Um, so, yeah. The other thing is that, like, the difference between a three- and four-player party is that there are more monsters set up in a four-player party immediately. But So we'll talk about this now. So there are sort of two strategies for how you can approach this scenario. Either you, so the rules are, I guess I'll read these rules to everyone just so they can see. Uh, until door one is open, which is the door in the back, one normal Inox Guard spawns at A at the end of every odd round for two characters or the beginning of every round for three or four characters. So um, since it, so but yeah, sorry. So reaching this door stops the infinite spawning. The goal for this scenario is to kill a number of Inox equal to five times, five times the number of characters. We need to kill 15. Uh, so basically, like, what you can do is you can try to, like, rush up to here, open this door quickly, and then just fight everything that you currently have available, and then you get to open some doors at your own leisure afterwards. The other strategy, and more realistic strategy on higher difficulties, is to quickly run into one of the side rooms. Typically this room, just because it's a little bit easier to get to because it kind of doesn't block your way, but I don't know. I mean, it just sort of depends. Um... I guess I just naturally always go right because I'm a righty. Maybe lefties go left. Who knows? Uh, yeah. So like this is the second strategy. So the thing is the difference between three and four characters, as you can actually see here, is the number of monsters set up in the beginning. So in a four-player party, I'll try not to show you that room over there, just so you understand this from memory, not from cheating. But in a four-player party, you have a lot more monsters set up on the board already. You've got four archers up here, and you've got six guards here. But the funny thing about this is this isn't actually so much of a handicap in a four player party first of all what it means is this doesn't spawn anything right away so like the difference like basically in a three player party one spawns here right away so you're already looking at five guards set up versus six it's just that one of them is further back but the other thing is since we're going to rush into a side room having more monsters in this room means it's actually going to be less like because of the standee limit we're not actually going to be able to set up monsters in the room we enter in a three player party if we go into this room on the first turn which is typically what we want to do we're going to just place all the monsters in here because they're not going to be placed in this room, which is actually just worse for us. So hilariously, the thing which is supposed to make this harder in a four-player party actually makes it easier in a four-player party. So this this scenario is just straight up like much – like I could take right now a level one scoundrel or a level one mind thief or just like a level one any of the starting characters from Gloomhaven, throw them into my party with like just starting items and everything, and I would make this scenario significantly easier for myself, like significantly like, a fourth character in my party doesn't actually make the scenario harder. It actually makes the scenario easier, and it's adding a fourth character. Now, it doesn't quite... It's actually more of a side grade, right? Because, in fact, there are more ranged enemies, which is a bit of an annoyance. But, like, realistically, like I said, it four-player party here does not actually increase the difficulty of the scenario while giving you a fourth character. Now, theoretically, it does increase the difficulty of the scenario because you do have to kill 20 monsters instead of 15, so there is that. But, realistically, it doesn't make it much harder, and you're getting a lot of added bonus by having a fourth character. So this scenario specifically is just like really dumbly balanced for a three player party based off of sort of how you have to play it in high difficulties at lower difficulties. Obviously the four player versus three player difficulty or difference is a little bit 
more significant because theoretically at lower difficulties what is easier or more realistic to do is actually to try the strategy to run up here and open this because the enemies don't hit for as much damage and you can kind of survive their attacks more easily here you can see how much damage we're looking at in the first room so what here we've got 12 and here we're at uh 16 and realistically there's another 16 so we're like 32 damage per round obviously we won't be taking all of that and we can see see some of them but it's still way too much incoming damage to run past with characters who have a you know health pools of 10 18 and what 15 12 yeah god you're just under leveled and under health i guess so yeah Ultimately, competitive difficulties, this is the only realistic strategy, unless, again, you have like a character who's sort of a specialist at running off by themselves, sort of invisible or easily mitigated, hidden, stuff like that, which we don't. We're also playing with Jaws line characters who just don't have much movement, so it's not very, I mean, like, again, an average large move for a character in base Gloomhaven is a 4, an average large move for a character in Jaws line is more like a 3. I mean, Void Warden and... Uh, Hatchet mostly just make move 3s, they have one move 4, Redguard has some move 4s, but still, like, where we would have move threes or move fours in regular Gloomhaven, we have threes in uh, Jaws characters. And where we have fours here, we would normally have like fives or even sixes on regular Gloomhaven characters. So again, the realistic expectation of... There's almost no realistic expectation of being able to reach this door to begin with at really high difficulties, although there depends on the party. With the Jaws characters, it's actually just impossible for us to reach this door. I mean, maybe if we had a demo, that would be the only one who could do it. Um, so we have to go into one of these rooms, and because we have to go into one of these rooms, we're actually disadvantaged for playing with three characters. Significantly. So, again, I didn't. I have been putting off doing this scenario. Obviously, we unlocked it very early on. I knew that the scenario was just a, a nightmare of balance for a three-player party. And, obviously, we just jumped up to plus three this past week. So, like, yeah. I, I go into the scenarios s s highly expecting to lose. I would be shocked if we win. But, again, we've got scenarios we've got to do. And it makes sense to be playing a plus three because we were waiting a bunch on plus two. I wouldn't want to be accused of taking it too easy. I know people like to see me be challenged, and I also like to be challenged. Realistically, I think even at plus two, we wouldn't be favored to win this scenario. And I think at plus three, we have a very, very small chance. All right, so all the decks are good. Let's go ahead and grab battle goals then. Oh, I should mention we did our road and city event our city event we just basically got a card into the deck and the road event we each lost a check mark so pretty cool cause a trap to be sprung or disarmed on your turn and your current hit point value must be equal to your maximum hit point value at the end um are there even traps in this scenario i guess in the last room there are going to be some traps is the thing yeah there are three traps so there are none in this room and realistically i don't even know if we ever make it to this room i know what's in there i don't actually care about getting it in this party at all like there's a chest but I think we probably never spring a trap in this scenario because there's only three so i think there's only three traps right let me double check up here without looking at the map yes there's only three traps and we know where the traps are they're here um so there's not any traps in these rooms there's no traps in this and we're probably never getting to leave this area of the scenario once we go into here we sort of just like commit to never leaving uh yeah so we shouldn't be able to spring a trap so i guess we'll try to go to max hp at the end although who knows if that'll happen one or more monsters present every round absolutely possible here and much more likely than 13 experience and here seven or fewer experience okay the dream well we lost some check marks but maybe we're gonna get some check marks i guess what's annoying is i've got these great battle goals for this scenario but we're still most likely gonna lose so i suppose that's worse oh crap i put back the other for some reason i got rid of the void wardens there i'll have to grab that again one second was fast healer there we go all right i think we already did shuffle everything let's give everything one last shuffle for better luck this time all right there are no additional scenario rules it's just the spawning for a round mm. So here, monsters are level 6, uh, but they're not actually level 6. Oh no, but traps, yeah, yeah trap, hazard, train, all that. Yeah, so monsters are 6, traps are 8, which means has train is 4. So this is actually pretty useful, the has train here, especially with the sand devil. Definitely a consideration for using the sand devil here. Okay. So this is going to be a bit weird, but what we need to do is we need to open one of these doors on the second turn, not the first turn, because we don't want a monster placed in there. Alright, so, 
How do we go about doing those things? I mean, I think the usual here makes sense. Stunning something for this round or next round is kind of similar. So I think we're always starting with those two cards there. I mean, realistically, we should always be setting up the favorite. Sorry, had to step away a few. Was the last scenario a loss? Oh, yeah, yeah. We did get the chest, though, which got us a random item design, which is item 80. But yes, otherwise, it was a, a big loss. A huge L. Okay. I mean, I think Shield Spikes is fine here. We're going to be fighting mostly guards in this scenario, so I think this combo makes sense. And again, setting up the favorite and just using a move three towards go towards the next room. Typically, we want to go towards this door as well because it allows us to like hide out down here, sort of. Whereas here, we can't really hide because of the annoying terrain. So it's something like this, this, and this. Yeah. So Red Guard will go to like here. Void Warden will stay there and stun one of them. For the following round, Hatchet will go here. Uh, the issue is then Void Warden. I mean, yeah, I guess Void Warden, we do a move for the following turn, plus boots to get just one. I mean, that's as far in as we can get, but that's fine. Well, not a total loss then. Yeah, unfortunately, the random item design we got is not something we'll ever be able to use, but we did get it. Is that reasonable, or is it better to just do a move this turn? That is the question. I mean, stunning is pretty useful. Yeah, I think I like stunning. Yeah. I mean, just going plus one movement should be fine. All right. Let's quickly set up the picture in picture. I guess realistically, we should frame it like this for now because we're going to go in there in a second. And we can tighten it up a little bit more eventually. All right. Let's go. So first things first, we have to spawn one of you in the back. Mm, all right, Shaman not doing really anything. Archers would have loved to see a no move, but minus range is still helpful, I suppose. It's just two regulars. Regulars. So they have normally four range and three movement. Here they gain no movement but they do gain minus one range so th three three one two three yeah that's fine that's still quite good for us definitely better than them flipping in a mobilize so i'll take it uh hello it is i the formerly van house friends for every afternoon <laughs> sorry about it really you don't have to worry about it, at least it's not a problem you're only van for a second but also hello i'm doing well how are you And the guards are just doing standard stuff. Sure. All right. So red guards up first. We're going to gain two experience, activate shield spikes, and we're going to do a move to shield two. So yeah, Void Warden will get hit a little bit here, but that's okay. Have to take a hit, have to take a hit. All right. And we also gain strengthen. These enemies do normally have one retaliate. Sure. So we have one shield and strengthen and shield spikes is active. Okay, hatch is up next. Two experience, activate the favorite, and do a move three. One, two, three, to there. Okay. Then the shaman goes. Shaman is going to do a move four. One, two, three, four, to there, and could heal someone, but has no one to heal. Ooh, bringing a shaman up is... <laughs> Very tempting. Basically, all right, so here's how this is going to work. What's going to happen is we're going to go in here, and we're going to sort of get swamped by a permanent stream of guards, right? But guards aren't the most difficult thing to deal with. That's kind of what we want is the permanent stream of guards. The issue is that these ranged enemies are going to be behind them attacking us. So the most important thing for us to do in this scenario is to, as quickly as possible, try to kill the ranged enemies, which we kind of have to do by getting them to move up as much as possible by going in here in line of sighting. We're also going to have a ranged enemy in here we have to kill. But the Shaman moving up this much actually gives us some interesting possibilities since we have the compass. We'll touch on those shortly. All right, Archers up next. Again, Archers have three movement and only three range here. One, two, three. 
one, two, three. So a three range, one, two, three, does not reach anyone, which is really beautiful for us. All right, time for the guards to go. So guards have normally three movement. I'm just gonna move this one. One, two. Yeah, that doesn't get any closer. Oh, I guess it go one, two, three like that. Yeah, that does get any closer. Yep. One, two, three. One, two, three. You to there. All right. So it's going to be attack here, attack here, attack here. So first on the red guard. Sure. A plus zero. So we use this. We use this. We have our one shield already. So it's three shield on what was an attack four. So we take one damage and you take three damage. And then we have the attack on the Void Warden. Okay. That's fine. So here we take four simply. Nothing defensive to use or anything like that. Nope. And then the next attack on the red guard, it's a plus one, so five. Again, we have two shield now. Well, damage comes in quickly. So we take three damage and you take two damage. <sighs> Hands are cold. All right, and the Void Warden goes. So we're gonna gain a couple experience. Gonna activate Master Influence and we're going to give ourselves a curse to stun something within range three. What to stun? Uh, so if the 15 initiative poison, this is annoying for us because we're most likely, yeah, we're going to go at 26. I'm just going to press the end of the round. I can discard this as well. So yeah, this is an interesting thing to consider here, right? How to approach this. What we care about stunning. Like, obviously, I could stun the shaman magically, I would, but I can't, so I won't. Um, hmm. So, is it just this? I mean, us getting attacked is sort of the worst, but this one's also less likely to attack, I guess. I suppose this one's the most likely to attack, but that doesn't really change so much. I mean, these, if they don't move and attack, this one hits us. If they do move and attack, then I don't know. I don't even know how it's necessarily going next turn. We're all just ducking into this room. Basically, like, one of us is going there, one of us is going there, and Red Guard's going there. The thing I don't like about holding a door is that the ranged enemies don't move up enough. Ideally, we want to move more than that, but we can't really this coming turn. I mean, I guess technically we can. Hatchet can use boots. Void Warden can use boots. Red Guard goes to there. That's not much better, but that is better. All right. So if that's happening, we're always going to do all this before the immobilizes and before these guards can move and attack. That's a given. The scenario is also just a nightmare for Hatchet, right? Because we never get to retrieve the favorite. Yeah, I don't know how we beat this. God. Who knows? Who knows? Maybe we shouldn't have activated the favorite. Honestly, I may have just made a mistake there. I just kind of autopiloted that one. I didn't really think about it, but we're never getting the favorite back in this. So, yeah. Whoops. This is probably a scenario we should have played around not using the favorite ever. Or at least not for a long time. But we'll see. I mean, too late now. I don't know. So it doesn't really matter too much which one we stun. I mean, I guess then we should actually just stun this one in case they do the non-move poison attack. That's really it. Otherwise, stunning none of them actually matters. In reality, I guess I should just plan around moving here. Maybe I should still then? It sucks to pass up Freeze the Soul, but in reality, I think this is actually just the... Well, now if they do the non-move poison attack, we just get destroyed here. We just have to go at 13. Or just not play around a 1 out of 7. Not play it around a 1 out of 7 that just makes us lose the scenario. Doesn't seem like the best play. The worst part here is that I guess the Shaman can also immobilize us. Yeah, so I guess we go to here. This does let us get further into the room. How advantageous is that if we do this instead? So if we can do a move 4 and then go one further into the room, then let's hatch it, just go to like there. Yeah, I mean, I guess that is actually better, because then we can do, like, this, this, and this, which is sort of exactly how we want to be. Sort of. But yeah. All right, let's just do that. Let's, so we can get that curse out of our deck. I guess that's not nothing, either. Yeah, I regret, but I may regret playing the card. Okay, so... Well, we already know exactly what we're doing then. Playing Resigned Frenzy. Got the plan of using our boots and Resigned Frenzy and 
So we don't have any elements created here. We can have some. Okay, so what are the things that has to happen here? Well, Redguard needs to move before they go. Before we can get immobilized, basically. Because getting immobilized out here is a disaster. So we kind of actually have to play this. Are we really playing this just around a 1 out of 7 from them? No, 1 out of 8 from them. I mean, I guess if we get immobilized, we just lose the scenario. I don't know. We're kind of playing against a lot of possibility of losing the scenario anyway. And just activate the Sand Devil as well. Sure. The thing is, because if Red Guard's going to get immobilized, we can still just move to here so that we get immobilized at least on the door instead of being out here. Out here, we can get attacked by four things, and the door at least is only two things. All because of one possibility. It's so bad, but... And also, we're just going to take a bunch of damage this way anyway. Still, though, I think this is correct. All right. So in reality, what we'd like to do is to move back to here. So we won't be adjacent to anyone. So resign or so Wicked Scratch doesn't really do the thing here. So let's just do the thing with Last Journey, I suppose. And then for us, I mean, we also need to have decent initiative here. We need to beat. I mean, we need to be 29 or faster, basically. 30 doesn't cut it. And we need to move three. I mean, I guess literally we're just playing these two cards then. That's, that's sort of it. Because we have to play this and we need this for movement. I mean, I guess we could play a different initiative. We don't have any other initiatives that attack. So yeah, it's literally these two cards. All right, well. So the only choice, the only place we really had a choice was here on the red guard. Or we could have tried to be greedier by playing like, I don't even know, one of these things. No. Play around the immobilize. Well, of course we didn't need to. Uh, plus one range, eh? Hmm, okay. I'm not hitting, so it's sort of okay. So we need to spawn one more view. So it won't let us spawn. All right, good. Just making sure. All right, we need another summon token on you. Okay, so red guards up. We're going to create fire by doing a move four with flame shroud. I'm going to move first, then I'll create the Sand Devil, depending on what we see in here. So, yeah. Now, there was supposed to be an Elite Guard in here, but because we've got all the guards on the table, there's no Elite Guard in here. Alright, by waiting an extra turn, saved ourselves quite a bit. Okay, so the plan was always to go to here, then. And whenever they move into it, they'll also take damage and get muddled, right? Anytime a figure moves on to the Devil, or vice versa, the figure stuff has one damage against muddle. Yep. All right, so where are you at, Sand Devil? There you are. I'm going to put you here and gain two more experience. So this is active as well, and this is locked, or discarded. All right, hatchets up. So I'm going to do the top of center mass as an attack three range three, or attack four range three. Wish I could hit you, but sadly I cannot. Nope. All right, so I'm just going to attack guard number one. Nice. Now guard number four. Good sand devil level, at least. Definitely. Definitely good sand devil level. Like, is this really how we have to start the scenario? Was it not enough what happened to us the last scenario? Is this really how things are just going to be all day? All right, move three plus boots. Total move four. Two, three. I mean, at least we didn't throw the favorite, but obviously it never made sense to throw the favorite here. Heal you for one. Should I put the Sand Devil here, actually? I wasn't thinking about this, because I'm actually... I mean, that, that attack didn't change anything, but... No, because they'll still go through it. Doing this again. Because I don't love them all getting in here. I guess I could just go here, go invisible. No, I can't. Last scenario as luck has continued over, it would appear. Whatever, we'll worry about that after. All right, we go there, that's the thing. 
So we begin by attacking with the last journey, targeting uh, same one. All right. Five. Create ice as well. Give them a curse. And then we're going to use the bottom of Resign Frenzy as a move four. Oh, is it? Do we get this as well? Oh, we do. Uh. So all of us would get this. Yeah, we are all hurt by Sand Devil. Hmm, that's annoying. And all muddled. Hmm, yeah, okay. I've got to, I'm going to rethink my positioning things quickly. But let's, let's go with this as a working theory for now. So if I go here, I just have to go invis right now on the Void Warden as the thing to prevent too many of these from moving in this turn. Because I don't really want them coming in. We didn't, we couldn't stop on the door. Yeah, I think I just go in, I think this is fine. I just go invis. Sure. I'm not sure how useful the Vis Invis Cloak is going to be on the Void Warden here anyway, so. This is fine. All right, so the guards go. So that guard doesn't advance because this guard goes and takes the only spot. Goes here, takes one damage. It's muddled. So attacks the red guard with his advantage. Okay. So normally we're attacking for four. Here minus one is three. We don't have any shield, so we take three. Let's do this anymore. All right. Archers don't move and don't have line of sight to either of these characters. Shaman goes. Minus one movement, but he can't actually find focus, so he doesn't move. And it just puts a blast in their deck. All right, well, uh, I mean, from here, we can do, no, we actually can't. We can't hit two targets with the fancy hat combo, actually, this turn, because we don't have line of sight. So instead, let's do a heal and just do a top attack, I guess. So we want to go as late as possible to keep the spot blocked. It's also not too difficult to do. So we just play this and I think this. Yeah, this seems fine. Just some gifted attacks. That's what we're doing here. Keeping the spot as an obstacle as long as possible. So there's for now just the one guard in there. Okay. And so for us... A strangling chain looks pretty good here. Yeah, we take a tiny bit of retaliate, but so be it. Yeah, a strangling chain looks really good here. We also, oh, we have we even have fire for it. Oh, the dream. I don't love a bottom attack here though because. Yeah, I like. I think I just like doing this here. I don't love the bottom attack here because we attack into retaliate. I know it will trigger the tra strangling chain, but. I think I just prefer to disarm it and try to mitigate incoming damage this turn. Um, because we're already going to take a bit of damage here, and there's the possibility of taking more damage from ranged enemies. So all scenario, there's basically like one flip that really matters. That just We have to avoid as much as possible, which is the guards doing their ranged attack. That's the really, really bad thing for us here. All right. I like this. Okay. So standard stuff. That's fine. Archers, once again, not moving. Shaman, immobilizing. Sure. Okay, so the Shaman has minus one movement, so it's going to be three movement and four range. So he actually just has to move to here. That's fine. And attacks the Red Guard. Beautiful. That's really nice. Any damage mitigation here is a big deal. I'll definitely take it. I'll definitely take it. All right. So the Shaman's done, so Red Guard goes. So we're going to move the Sand Devil. We're going to go like that with the Sand Devil, which is going to take you to here, I guess. Maybe not, because I'd like to kill the Shaman, right? So let's actually not be stupid here. The problem is if I take him to there, it's hard. For, I can't get the Shaman in next turn. I think the most important thing is just to start juggling the Shaman, right? Yeah. 
who cares them? I, I like I really don't care that much about this card. I'm gonna care, but not that much. All right, so we muddle both of these. God, Sand Devil's gonna be so good here. Yeah, because then from now on we can just every turn just go back and forth, back and forth. Basically, the Sand Devil's just gonna be doing four direct damage a turn to the Shaman, which is kind of the best possible thing we could dream of. Also, what if I actually need to read the rules a little bit about this? Uh. Certain, you may move it up to two X's and force any figure on it to move with it. Anytime a figure moves on to the devil. So this is interesting as well. So theoretically, we can even do, like, I guess maybe, th is this in the glossary? No, it can't be because it's a spoiler thing. I guess, what's the FAQ on this? So for example, if there's an archer adjacent, can I move the, and I remember this even came up during testing, like when we were working on this, and I don't remember what Isaac said. I, I remember having asked this exact same question. So maybe someone in chat can answer it for me since I don't remember what the answer to it was. Um, if I, like, so let's say this archer's here, and I take this shaman, and I go like this and this. Can I do that? Can I bring the shaman like that, basically just to get one free damage on the archer each time? Because, like, it's weird, because theoretically, like, we're moving two characters into one hex. We're just, I guess, required to move the character to the other thing. Because, like, theoretically, what would happen if... Let's say I have an archer here, and I move the shaman to there. I don't actually have to move the sand devil another hex. I can just stop there. So then what happens with them both being on the same hex? Because that's a legal movement for the sand devil. Then I just couldn't legally move the shaman like that. But does like does each individual move consider what I'm going to do in the future with the sand devil? Or is it just like all part of one forced movement on the enemy? So if it's just to there, it's just not a legal forced movement. I guess that's the, how it would work. I'm just not sure. So basically, I'm not sure if I could like... I mean, I know I couldn't move it there and then, like, magically have them both, and then, you know. So either I wouldn't be able to move the Shaman, I guess, if I'm just moving to a Hex with Archer, or if I know that I'm going to go, like, if the full movement is like that, because that's the whole action, then it's just, I can go like that, move through the Archer, deal one damage to the Archer, just drag the Shaman along, as long as I'm going to somewhere else afterwards. I think that's how it probably works, but I'm not sure. All right. Anywho, hatchets up. We're going to just do an attack three, range three, with a peat shot targeting this guard here. Again, I'm not going to be throwing the favorite. It's just too risky to put the favorite in. I would need to save the favorite for targeting a ranged enemy. Yeah, I really do regret playing it, though. All right, here comes the attack. We are disadvantaged. All the more reason not to throw it this turn. All right, so plus one. So we just do four damage here. And then I'm going to just do a heal three, which creates wind. Got all, almost managed all the elements here on the red guard. This does not pertain to our current situation, but using the Sand Devil as a surfboard for the Red Guard is pretty fun to get some extra movement in bigger scenarios. Fair point. Yeah, Sand Devil's just awesome. I love it. It's interesting to me that people found it to be underwhelming. Oh, crap. I didn't do the Red Guard first. I just I clicked on him, and then I started talking about the Sand Devil stuff. All right. Well, anyway, that's fine. There's actually going to be two more damage from Hatchet there, because uh, this target's going to be marked with the or strangler chain so first we go with a red guard we consume the fire gain one experience with strangling chain so we make an attack three immobilize and strangling to this guard here we did not get muddled right now we're just immobilized which we just lose Ugh, it's so annoying how that works all right so plus two three plus two is five total two three four five like that it is by far the best level 5 card of the 4 IMO. To be clear, I haven't looked at the demo level 5 card. I'm okay with that. <laughs> um, I would. I don't know if I would say it's the best. I actually think the best one is the Void Wardens. I mean, I think... For, all right, depends what you mean by best. Or we take one more tally here. It is best in terms of design, I think, 100%. In terms of actual power level, I think the Void Wardens is the best. Again, the Void Wardens not for the Persistent Loss, which is just fine in some scenarios but more i think that this action is the best single action of any of the level five cards um by a significant margin in fact but yeah i mean the sand devil is my favorite of the level five cards because it is both good both halves are good and the effect itself like the persistent itself is very cool and very useful while not being too strong And it's also, like, you know, unique, interesting. All right, so then we move and we disarm you. Okay, so now we actually did our turns in the right order. So then the guard goes, loses the disarm, you lose this, you lose this, and that's that. Archers do not have line of sight, and Void Warden goes. 
going to lose. I mean, I'm not going to attack here, so I'm just going to remove that model right now. So, one ally within range. So we have, yeah, we have a million elements. We're going to recreate dark here, but we can consume the old dark on one of his attacks. Let's say that we're doing that. I mean, it doesn't matter which elements we're consuming here. Oh, I guess we also could have consumed a different element here. Yeah, we can actually consume the ice, which we don't care about, and make fire. We could consume the dark to make light. Uh... I mean, we can theoretically use light. I mean, it doesn't... I guess, sure, why not? We'll, we'll consume the dark as well and make light. Okay. Getting a non-loss advantage attack with possible plus one attack. Yeah, I mean... Right, it's in a... It's... I mean, it's even crazier than this. It's not, like... This is better than an attack for range three on bottom, right? Because of the fact that, first of all, I can reach much further. Since, like, I can have the Shaman attack one of these, right? At an obscene range. Additionally, I get all the added effects from monster attacks. I also can force monsters to attack into each other to trigger retaliate. And yes, it is, like, so it's an attack for range three with sort of, like, obscene range and the ability to get a bunch of added effects with advantage. I mean, like, yeah, it's just... This action is insane. Especially on 11 card class. I'm going to guess technically 10 card class if you're considering how good this is because you master influence, but yeah. Okay, so now, finally, it is our turn. So the first thing we're doing is Wicked Scratching. I don't believe we gain the experience, no. So I'm going to gain an experience, I'm going to create Dark, and I'm going to consume Earth to start. There we go. And consume Earth. So I'm gifting the red guard an attack here. So this is an attack for five with advantage performed by the red guard. Mm -hmm. We recreate fire, sure. Oh, interesting. So the fire will be created at the end of the round. So we can actually consume that fire now and we'll still get fire. Okay, that leaves us all the elements just in case. Sure. So yes, so this kills here. Puts us at plus one. Slow and steady wins the race, so they'll be able to start respawning again. Okay. Right, so we, yeah, we have this fire later, so we're going to use the fire that's there now with the bottom of stand fast. One ally or enemy within range three may perform attack three, range three, targeting an enemy of your choice. So we'll consume the, the old fire for that to make this attack four with advantage. So this is where it gets interesting, because it's tempting to attack and to retaliate. But it's also tempting to attack these archers because it's so important to hit them. I guess this is also muddled, which is a reason not to do it. I mean, I guess if I were to make this attack here, it would take one retaliate. I don't really want to damage these, though. That never makes sense. Like, I mean, technically I'm damaging this as well, but only for one. If these had high retaliate values, this would be different. So I think the best is probably just to have this attack here. Killing the Shaman still has to be the highest priority here. The Shaman is definitely the most dangerous enemy. And the archers kind of, but yeah. I think the shaman is the enemy we have to worry the most about. It also can heal, which is a bit annoying. I mean, ultimately we need to kill all the ranged enemies, and the shaman is closer, which... But, I mean, ultimately we can kind of bring any of these things closer if we want to between the compass and the sand devil. So, yeah, I think I'm just going to command this guard to attack the shaman. So attack four with advantage in the end. Using our deck. Okay. Yeah, okay. Okay, okay. One, two, three. Um, do I want to stamina push in that back? Is the question now. Yeah, I think I do. I think... Or maybe I stamina push in back Resigned Frenzy. Resigned Frenzy's not currently that good. I mean... Yeah, we don't even have ice, do we? No. Although the red card can create ice for us. We could do a Taunting Fate Resigned Frenzy next turn. Is that worth? The enemies aren't quite close enough to each other. I mean, I guess... Theoretically, if the red guard's going here, we can use the compass to bring another enemy closer. Like, bring you into there. And do a lot of things. Yeah, alright, alright, alright. That seems too good. Can the red guard go early doing that? So we have lights. So we can even do this bottom plus this top. Yeah, I go 12, 13. Okay, alright, let's do it. So I'm going to use my stamina potion now, and I'm going to get back Resign Frenzy. Yep. 
looks good. And round. So this plus this. So it has to be this plus this. And for us, so we still don't have line of sight on two enemies, so we kind of need to move now. We don't have this either. So we just need to move to like here. And do some attacks, sure. So we'll save this combo. So I guess we're just doing, sometimes I could just throw the favorite now and then follow it up. We're missing out on like plus one by not using fancy at when we use ricochet. Hmm. Attacking with just follow through sort of sucks. But I also don't want to throw the favorite into a guard. I mean, at this point, it looks like I'm going to maybe get a little more space to go pick up the favorite, though. So maybe it's fine. Yeah, I think that's actually fine to do. I think it's okay to do it like this, then. Sure. I mean, the favorite's going to be there. We're not going to... It might still just get swamped, though. I guess... No, pretty soon we're maybe running out. Let's try. Let's try this. Worst case scenario, we're missing out one damage. We don't use the favorite. And we'll just, like, yeah. Worst case scenario, we're missing out on one damage. And we have a pretty high upside here. Oh, no. Not the disarm. Oh, my God. Come on. Is this really reasonable? <sighs> I should have mana potion last turn. I... I should have just used my mana potion, then I didn't even have to do this nonsense. I could have just mana potioned the ice. God damn it. God damn it. It was so bad. I could have played around this. I mean, at the same time, like... Alright, well, whatever. Attacks at minus one. That's fine. So, three damage. Oh, actually, disarm or disadvantage. Sure. No! God damn it. Four damage. Sorry. Not three. Four. Because our disadvantage attack actually takes makes us take more damage. <laughs> oh, isn't that amazing? Isn't that something? Archers. So, you don't have enough. So, you're still not moving. All right. That's good, at least. That's good, at least, I guess, sort of. Except I kind of wanted to move one up, but we'll see. I mean, I guess we're just not doing the combo anymore, because we don't have the ice, since we can't create the ice anymore. All right, well, first the Sand Devil goes, and I'm just going to go boop, boop, like that. So four direct damage to this, no longer muddled. I love it when our muddle causes us to take more damage, not less. Isn't that an interesting and fun game rule? Are you not entertained? All right. Uh, so yeah, I mean, we can't do like this and this, which would have been nice. We can do this. Uh, I'm definitely using my healing potion here because we're gonna take some more damage. We're going up 13. It's not like they really actually, I guess these do wound, but I think I'm taking too much damage this turn. I think it's too risky. I also don't get to go super early next turn. So yeah. How is it taking four damage? How is the the shaman taking four damage? So we all right, let me make sure I haven't misread the card somehow. At the start of each of your turns, you may move it up to two hexes, and you may force any figure on it to move with it. Anytime a figure moves, well, anytime a figure moves onto the devil, or vice versa, not when moving together, the figure suffers one damage and gains muddled. So I can every turn move the sand devil two, and I can make any figure on top of the sand devil move with the sand devil. So what I can do is I can simply take this shaman here and go. Like this, right? Magic. Moves to here, moves back. Four damage. Isn't there more to it? More to the text that I didn't read? All right. Place the sand devil in an adjacent empty hex. It is considered a trap for the purposes of focusing and monster movement. At the start of each of your turns, you may move it up to two hexes, and you may force any figure on it to move with it. Okay, don't see anything. 
Anytime a figure moves on to the devil or vice versa, not when moving together, the figure suffers one damage and gains model. Is what am I missing? I don't understand. Sorry, I'm gonna keep playing while you explain this to me. I'm gonna do the bottom of Desert Knight as a move. I'm just gonna go to here. So these have four range, they're not moving, right? Yeah, so so much for compassing one of them. I'd like to compass for the Resigned Frenzy, but the Resigned Frenzy just got worse too, since we don't have the ice anymore, since we can't create it because we're disarmed. So I'm gonna use this move to here, and I'm going to use the top of Barbaric Instincts to do shield one, pull one, range two. So I'm gonna pull, that's, yeah, I can't, even if I were to leave you there, I wouldn't be able to pull you because this is there. Hmm, is there a better way to do this? Right. <sighs> Hold on. So. No. There's not really a way. I mean, I guess it is pretty valuable to get the shaman next to us. I could actually do that instead. I take less damage, though, is the annoying thing. Juggling it in this. Is, like, getting it next to us is valuable, but juggling it in that is also very valuable. What can we even do here? I mean, I guess we're just doing a heal. Oh yeah, if we're doing a heal, we actually don't need, we don't need to use this potion. Never mind. Um. Yeah, no, I think it's fine to just damage the guards here. Okay, so yeah, we just do a default move there. We move with this, create fire, do shield one, pull one range two. We're just gonna pull you, and then they each suffer one damage. And we have one shield. Okay, and that's our turn. Got a mana potion. This we could have still made it work, but sadly we do not. Okay. Well, I'm certainly not. I mean, I guess yeah. I'm gonna move and gain one experience by consuming the dark, and then I'm just going to gain another experience and add a bless into their deck, and do a heal six on the red guard. We were gonna have a beautiful turn, which we stamina potion for, and then it got messed up because shamans are assholes. Okay, then the hatchet goes. So on the hatchet, we're gonna use the bottom of retrieval, which also makes our plan to throw the favorite here a little bit more risky. But still probably okay. I guess should have gone to the red guard. All right, so I'm gonna just use the bottom of retrieval to move, and then I'm gonna use the top of ricochet to do an attack three range two, attack three range three, and then attack two target different enemy with a range two of the target of the previous attack. Uh, sadly, I can't actually bounce from here to here because I don't have line of sight here. So first I'll attack the Shaman, which I'm definitely throwing the favorite at because you know, that's what matters is killing the Shaman. So where is our favorite? Okay. Oh, did we forget to spawn a guard this round? It was... yes. We did forget to spawn a guard this round. Yeah, it was the previous round that we killed the other guard, right? Yeah. All right. There we go. Okay. So, uh, attacking the Shaman, throwing the favorite, using the goggles. So we have an attack six, targeting the Shaman with advantage. I mean, it's not even really worth stunning the Shaman at this point. It's already done. Like, it has just one bad thing left in its deck, which is the two target curse, which would be very bad, but there's no reason to think that it'll be the one out of five next turn. Plus, we can always get a crit or something. All right, on the Shaman first. All right, or just flip a stun. Beautiful. I'll take that. That's actually really nice. So, yeah, it was a six. And it's stunned. And then we'll make it our attack two. Probably just makes sense to try to clear some of these out to some degree, especially since the favorite's there now. So we'll attack number four next. Uh huh. Okay. So that does two plus three is five, putting him to one. It means we can actually just execute him with the Sand Devil at some point if we want to, which is actually kind of tempting. All right, so, oh no, actually he's just going to die to the Retaliate here. That's interesting. All right, so this one and this one both don't move, which is actually good for us because they can't find focus right now. So then we've got number four, which goes, oh, that's a bit of an annoyance. Oh no, move minus one. Perfect, perfect, perfect. Okay. So number four is going to attack here. They're going to strengthen themselves. I guess I should put this on all of them. Strengthen themselves after the attacks, though. 
So these attacks are not, oops, not advantage. Uh, yeah, this one also doesn't move because this one's still there. So this one attacks. They attack at plus zero on attack fours. We have one shield here. Nice. So we take one damage and this takes one damage. It's two. Yeah, we've only killed two thus far. Yep. All right. And then this one has just two movement, so it can go to there. And then this one hits plus zero. So it takes one and we take three. Okay. And the archers are doing multi. I mean, we're getting really lucky with them. Oh, wait. This archer does get to hit us. Crap. I forgot this one was closer up. Yeah, previously they didn't because line of sight. But no, this one actually does get to hit us. Eh, oh, well, I mean, it's fine, I guess. We're going to get wounded. It's time to use the thing now. They attack at minus one as well. Normally they would hit for four, so minus one here is three. Sure. Two. So we take one damage. Yeah, I mean, whatever. This is fine. All right. I'm just going to play my cards. Don't think it makes sense to do anything else. Go as early as I can. We'll see what we do with it. All right. Oops. So we can't deposit the shaman there. I mean, I guess the sand devil's moving after the hatchet goes here anyway, so it's fine. All right. So what are we up to now? So we have no dark. Dark moving something to there is nice, but with no dark, that's not happening. So what are we looking at here? Like this is theoretically a bottom. We don't have ice or anything. I should just have basically no elements. So I think we're just attacking with this here and using this for initiative, and that creates dark. And then theoretically we can, I don't know, do one of these things next turn. I guess these kind of overlap, but I don't really see using give and take top here. Uh, I mean, I guess strengthening hatchet. No, but we you don't get to do it before hatchet attacks is the issue. Mm, yeah. Yeah, I think this makes sense. Just do this top to hit something here. And we'll see from there. Yep. Guards doing their 15 stuff. That's a bit of an annoyance. Shaman standard stuff. Archer's finally coming up. Okay. So, first of all, I think we have another guard that spawns. Alright, so hatchet's up first. So, I'm just going to do the bottom of fancy hat at plus one to all my attacks this round. And then I'm going to attack with follow through. So, this is an attack three, plus we're targeting the target with a favorite. So, this is an attack five, targeting the shaman. Take a plus zero here. It's fine. All right. And we're done. Then the archers go. Huh? All right. So they have four range by default. Yeah. Minus one attack. So they're attacking for three here. So this one's going to go first. So here it does have line of sight. Yeah. So both of them just attack from there and there. And they place traps in both cases in front of them. Oh, traps! Darn it! I'm an idiot. I forgot. Alright, where are our traps? I'll use these traps. We did have a chance. I mean, I guess we had to count on them doing this. They're always going to do this at some point. They always do. Okay, two attack threes on the red guard. Alright, three will take it. Ooh, what a mess, man. All right, we're getting a bit lucky now. <laughs> Don't mind that. Don't mind that one bit. Ooh, this is the bad part, though, right? Yeah. This is the bad part. This is the very bad part. All right, so this is going to attack there with advantage. Ugh. Okay. Well, I mean, just a plus zero, so it's four. The only thing in here is the poison. <sighs> okay. All right, Void Warden goes. Well, I think that has to probably change up our plan a little bit. I think we just need more health on the Red Guard. Health on the Red Guard is sort of the most important resource to us here because it's it what's, it's what lets us hold out in, in this position that we're in.
Yeah. I think that's more valuable than a gift to the void attack. I mean, this enemy's stunned anyway. The thorns puts it to... I mean, no, actually, we, we can just kill the shaman this turn. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I don't really care about an attack... I mean, like, an attack, sure. An attack poison, getting poison on one of these and doing some damage to it is useful, but I think I prefer healing here. Okay. So, the only point that matters is the last one. All right, so I'm just going to... I'm going to poison, target sell for one ally within range two. I'm just going to poison the red guard. And then I'm going to create dark. Also, hey, blah. Bless and strengthen uh, the hatchet. So bless to there. Strengthen to there. And then I'm going to do heal to range three with the bottom of Gift of the Void, removing this and this from the red guard. Because this actually saves a lot. I need to click on front. <laughs> nice. All right. So then here... First, we're going to use the Sand Devil. God, I love the Sand Devil. Sand Devil's been incredible here. Okay. Uh, yeah, then like after that, we can do that. Or by putting it here, we could even force enemies to take the long path around, which is not even bad. And then after that, do that. Yeah, sure. Okay, so I'm going to use the Sand Devil. I'm going to move like this and like this. I don't know how people are for, are down on this card. This card's amazing. All right, so that kills you. I guess the favorite was just deposited somewhere where it's never going to be picked up. <laughs> Hatch is like, but why? <laughs> but why? And Redguard's like, I, I don't control it. It has a mind of its own. What can I do? All right, so this goes there. It's like he was so much closer when I attacked. Um, okay. So the Sand Devil's there, which actually makes them consider this a trap wall. So now they're all going to start moving the long way around, which is interesting. Hi, uh, said I missed the first part. Uh, well, first part of this scenario was interesting. Uh, the first scenario was not interesting. It was just us getting demolished the entire time. Wasn't even close to being close. Okay. Um, I mean, like, yeah, there's something to be said for disarming or for immobilizing one of these. But I think personally, I prefer just to do as much healing as possible here while I can. So I'm going to just do this, gaining one experience, and I think I'll just go ahead and use my potion here as well, because we're in a bit of a precarious spot. And again, we can get healed if we get wounded again. It's not too difficult. So we're going to do seven total healing here, putting ourselves up to 11 between the potion and healing sands. And then I'm just going to do this, creating light, up, 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 looting this, and doing one damage here. The snare is brutal, yeah. And red guard level five, yep. Yeah, yeah, this scenario is definitely brutal. I haven't played Red Guard at all, but I imagine Sand Devil could be a headache in co-op. Yeah, maybe. That's fair. A headache or awesome, depending on how you approach playing with your group, right? Oh, so awesome, actually. All right. Well, we're going to do these things no matter what here. Can we get away with... All right, well, Hatchet's 100% short resting here. Can I get away with a long rest on the Red Guard? Man, I love the healing, getting all my items back. But the biggest thing is I just want to go quickly for this. Also, I could just end up taking too much damage. I guess not really, because we're always going to get to disarm one of these enemies. I think, I'm gonna, I think I can try to take a long rest here on the Red Guard. I think it's worth it. I love Sand Devil. Oh, yeah, Sand Devil's amazing. I mean, that's actually really good on this scenario. <sighs> Healing is really important. I actually think I'm going to re-roll to keep that, which is rare that I would do this, but... Mm, well, I'm not even sure how useful Ricochet is here, So, I mean, Retrieval is here, so I think this is actually fine. This is not really the type of scenario where Retrieval is good, even if Retrieval is typically one of our most important cards. I actually think that Healing card is better here. Accordingly, I actually think I'm going to heal. Like, I could do the Ricochet Fancy Hat combo here, but I really think I prefer just to. Like, I, I will keep Fancy Hat. Or I will keep Ricochet to go with Fancy Hat. I think I prefer just to do this here. And I guess just attack with this. Kind of makes our initiatives a little bit worse afterwards, but I think this is fine. This is just my best attack when I don't have the favorite in something that I'm attacking. And I do really think, like, with the riskiness of doing the long rest here on the red guard, I think it's pretty important to uh, get a heal. I guess we are strength in this round. 
<sighs> one of these enemies is going to be disarmed. How likely is it that the Red Guard gets truly messed up then? All right, so if we disarm one of these, these two attack for, it's like four, four, and four. Yeah, I mean, the Red Guard can die. Red Guard can actually die. I mean, we could go out and tank, but I don't know that that's really a better solution. No, God, it's a shame because I don't have the goggles after this. So getting, getting these attacks while strengthened is so good. Uh, dare I be greedy? I mean, these archers are always hitting the red guard, basically. And they can even hit for plus one. And there's no way both of these don't attack. So there's not really a way to... I mean... Yeah, there's no way they don't attack. I mean, one of them's always attacking. Oh, no, no, no. I guess we can use the stun powder here. Yeah, the stun powder actually lets us have it all. I mean, we can even potentially flip one of our CCs, but yeah. Actually, this is just... That That actually does let us do this. I really just want to make this attack here while I'm strengthened is the big thing. Is the big difference. I know the heal is so much better this turn, or so much more, so much safer this turn, but I think this is fine. They could also just, like, flip their retaliate thing once this scenario. I don't know. All right, well, at least, I mean, this isn't immobilized, but at least it's a minus one attack, so that's still pretty good. And I don't really care about getting immobilized on someone who's there, so this is fine. All right, hatchet's up first. So I'm going to use the bottom of Fancy Hat, add plus one to all your attacks this round, and I'm going to use the top of Ricochet. I'm going to attack, make my bigger attack here, my smaller attack here. So four and three on these two, respectively. Um, I do need to use the Sun Powder. I'll use the Sun Powder on the second attack, though. The target with less health, I think, just makes sense. Yeah, yeah, for sure. For sure, for sure. Okay, yep. I mean, I'll just declare that I'm using this now, no matter what. So, a four... I guess, no, because I flip a stun on the first attack, and then I won't. I think I have, the stun's already in my discard, and I don't believe I have two, though. Anyway, let's see. All right, first attack first. Yep, surely enough, using the stun powder on the second. Not great. I mean, like, don't we just have a bunch of good cards left in our deck? Yeah, I guess we had a minus two left in our deck. We had all plus ones in a crit, and we got a plus zero on an advantage attack. <laughs> Not very likely, but whatever. So the first one, we had a plus two on, right? Yeah. So we went plus two, plus zero. So plus two on a five, or on a three is a five, plus zero on two is two. Two, and you are stunned. Okay. Oh, no, no, no. It wasn't a three. Fancy hat. One more damage on each. Nice. That's solid. All right, so Void Warden's up now. Oh, that's even better. This is just beautiful. Man, I love Lure of the Void, by the way. All right, I'm going to consume Dark, gain one experience. I'm going to use the top of Lure of the Void, disarm, range three, force the target to perform move three with you controlling the action. So I'm going to go one, two, three, like so. Did I? I did forget to count. Yeah, we've killed two guards in the front, and we killed a Shaman, and we're actually about to go up to four now with this. So one, two, this is four damage, and then moving into the Sand Devil, one more damage. Oh my god, we're, we've created the juiciest spot ever for... It's so annoying that it does that. Whatever. I know that it's there. Who cares? That's what counts. And then I have a move three with suggestion, but I don't really want... I mean, I could move out now? I don't really think I want to, though. I mean, the other guards... I guess they're not going to move up. They're going to move that way. I don't know if it's any better to be here than here, though. I'm not really... I don't see an advantage to that, so sure. All right, so the archers go. They're both going to attack the red guard. Getting a wound here no matter what. So, I mean, suggestion bottom, just doing nothing. Okay. God, why is it so cold in here? These are going to be two attack threes, if I'm not mistaken. Yes, two attack threes. The immobilize, I'm not even bothering with that. Okay. Okay. So a three does three, and a one does one. All right. Then the guards go. This one's stunned. So here, this is considered a trap wall. So they're actually going to start going around the long way, which is exactly what we wanted here. So they have three movement. Oh, uh, did I forget to spawn one at the end of this round? Or the start of this round? God, where's the round tracker when you need it? I guess I can tell how many rounds we've had by the number of cards we've played. Crap. I'm pretty sure I did forget to spawn one this round, didn't I? 
And there definitely should have been... Oh, no, there wasn't one able to be spawned. Because we were three, and there was one we just killed. All right, so whether we forgot or... I mean, either we remembered and were good, or we forgot and it didn't matter because we couldn't spawn one. Okay, so three movement. One, two, three. One, two, three. One, two, three. Yes, yes, go all around. One, two, three. Okay, Red Guard gets long rest, loses one to the wound, heals for two, back up to there. There's a round tracker in the play area? Is there? Is there? Interesting. Hmm. So in which round are we? Obviously, I, I looked at that before I, I said that. I, I guess you might not have catched me quickly glancing at this to notice that it wasn't working, and therefore not actually tracking the round. Sorry, I don't mean to be too snarky. I'm mostly teasing. I mean, I am just teasing, of course. Sorry, hands are cold. This. Exactly. So... If you turn it on, it works. I mean, normally it's turned on by default. You can set it to track in the notebook. I think I normally do have it to track by default. Do we have you turned it off? Does it not do this by default? Do you have to actually turn this on? Oh, interesting. I didn't know you actually have to turn it on. So in the Frosthaven mod, it's just on by default, interestingly enough. Okay, okay. That's why I'm not used to it. I, I just assumed this always worked because I guess the whoever has created our Frosthaven testing mod for us has just set this as yes to, by default rather than no by default. So I, I just had the habit that this was always working. And for me, when it wasn't working here, it was because there's a bug, not because I had to turn it on. My bad. My misunderstanding. All right. So heal here, attack there. Definitely just short rest here. Tempo is pretty important right now. Uh... It's off by default, yep. Yeah. Uh, uh, no, I don't think we re we lose that. Yep, yeah, sure, that's fine. Take one. Oh, come on now. All right, what are we getting rid of here? Uh, I guess just this. We're kind of past the point of, I mean, uh, I don't know. Mobilize could actually still be decent. Maybe just this. No, but the shielding is also really good now that we're just going to be down to guards. So they want the healing and disarming. Yeah, this is probably just the worst thing. Gotcha. Gotcha, gotcha. Okay. Um... Oh, crap, I forgot to do the... On the long rest of the Red Guard, I did get to do this. Gotta get it, move all the stuff off. All right. So what I was going to do... I could either get Muddle on both of these. I think Muddle... I think it's better to to start them on the, the Pain Train rather than getting Muddle on both of them. I guess if I do this, next turn I can just do this. But if I do this here, then next turn I can do this. Sounds so much better. Hmm. No, I think muddling both of them and then doing full pain trade next turn and getting it right next to us is actually really useful. So, yeah, this goes here. Also, like, they're guaranteed to attack, so muddle definitely does something here. Sand Devil will be the main reason we win the scenario if we win it. Okay, so what am I up to then? Wishing I had a... No, I don't need a pull. Yeah. So if the archer gets brought up to us... I do need to go early is the thing here. It's a shame because this plus this just CCs everything. <clears throat> I guess I'm just going with this and this, I think. I'm going to just set up a little strangling on this archer then. And disarm you. Okay, 
So with all that considered, what are we up to? Well, Hatchet's already doing the Hatchet thing here. We're just hitting that guard. I guess it sucks because the Hatchet's going to be hitting a target that's not strangled. I mean, like, worst case scenario, I guess I can strangle this and disarm that. 19 does go right before 22, which is really convenient. We only take one retaliate. It's not that big of a deal. I suppose just like this and this here makes sense. Just our... Oh, we don't have all the elements. Hmm. Suppose this and this also could work. Yeah, I like that. Like, yeah, it's, it's difficult to describe why this works, but it, it's sort of in the sweet spot of if we go before or after certain enemies, it works out well for us. So one of these enemies is presumably getting disarmed early. So if they go then, then we can stun that same one. We also get to hit this one after it's strangled. Like, if it's possible that we're going to kill this one, then we can stun the other one. I'm like, I don't know. There, there's a lot of ways this works out well. I think this is fine. And it sets up the elements to then start comboing with gifts, gifted attacks afterwards. I think this is reasonable to do. All right. Sure. Yes, yeah, so the guard goes. All right. Yeah, so we've definitely got some lines here. Okay, so red guard's up first. So first, it's the devil. Goes to there. Goes to there. And you take seven. Two, three, four, five, six, seven. So much raw HP to chew through. Yeah, no kidding. Definitely a lot, but we might be able to make it. You're out of your element, Donnie. Yeah. We're going to do now a move two to here. I'm going to disarm you. And we're also going to strangle you then. I think this is actually the way we do this. Yeah, this makes sense. And we're going to hit you with a little strangling. So we attack with strangling chain. Mobilizing you. This doesn't actually matter. Yeah. I mean, technically doing range attacks here, but. Come on. Whatever. I mean, it, it, we've been pretty lucky thus far. I can't complain too much here. But I will. I can and I will. All right. So whatever. It's strangled. Every attack against it gets does one damage now. Okay. So we're done. So then Hatchet goes. So on Hatchet, we're going to do an attack four, range three. Targeting this guard here. Hmm. Well, that's unfortunate. Five damage. One, two, three, four, five. But so be it. And then we're going to do a bottom heal three, range two. Great wind. And we're going to heal the red guard for three. The Inox guards go. All right. So they're going to have minus one movement, if I'm not mistaken, and two range. Oh, we also did need to place a guard this round. Yep. Hey, didn't I turn counting on? It's not doing... Look. Move, yes. Didn't count. Mm, probably have to do it from the beginning of the scenario, is my guess. I'm just teasing here. All right, so you have two movement. One, two. Does get you closer. One, two. One, two. One, two. Oh, no, no, no. Oh, crap. I've got to reevaluate all these things. No. Oh, God. How did I move them? I mean, this one's always going like this. I forgot that the trap wall's gone now. This is counting down. So, what? Do I have to put it at 12? Is that how that works now? I mean, I just, just like, really? Why would this be the default way it counts? Who would do that? What the hell? All right. Um,. I can't be asked to re reverse engineer all these things. I'm not even sure if it was faster for them to go around this way. I think it's about the same, and I'm just moving them like this. Bad people, fair. All right, and you lose these things. I mean, they never could have gotten a range to attack this round, and I think this is probably, for most of them, the fastest route, if not all of them. This one obviously would have gone that way. Okay, Void Warden's up. So I'm going to create Dark, and I'm going to make an attack four range three, targeting the regular Archer here. All right, well, you hate to get a crit on something they only need four, but whatever. Killing it is killing it. We'll take these. And then I'm going to stun the guard here and curse myself. Okay. And then the archer goes. The archer is attacking at plus one on the red guard. Plus one, plus one. So that's six. I don't believe we had any shield active this round. I will just use one here. I'd rather use this for when we can actually get retaliate out of it. So, yeah. So we take five. 
Man, I feel like we just got healed up. Alright, and that's the end of the round. Alright, well, I guess we just need to keep healing the red guard here, huh? <laughs> so I'm going to do this top and this bottom. This bottom is actually fine here on Standfast, because we get to launch an attack from the red guard at this archer. The archer is definitely our priority target at this point, as the only ranged enemy left. And definitely it looks like the red guard's in a spot to need some healing. Um, speaking of the aforementioned red guard, we can go... There's no easy way to pull into this, is there? I mean, this just goes up to there this turn, which is still fine. So maybe just a, what do we have? Yeah, no relevant elements here. Just something like this is probably fine here. Get a little bit of shield, maybe hop up to there, disarm you, something like that. I like it. And as for us, I'm gonna start moving towards getting the favorite, right? Something like this, and honestly, I guess this attack here is probably fine. A little bit more healing on the red guard would not be the worst. Yeah, that works. Because then that gives us next turn, yeah, a push and a decent attack somehow. Sure. Okay, that's actually fine. That's perfectly fine. Because we got this one stunned last round. All right, so Void Warden's up. So I'm going to use the bottom of Sandfast. I'm going to consume the wind. Yeah, you're not using wind, so yeah. I'm going to consume the wind to do an attack four, range three. I mean, to have the red guard perform an attack four, range three, targeting this archer. Oh, the archer was muddled. Oops. Ah, well, didn't change anything. Uh, attack four, range three, targeting the archer. Nice. Beautiful. God, stand fast. All right, so that's lit in eight. Eight, nice. And then I'm just going to use the top of this, gaining one experience, putting another bless into their deck, and healing the red guard for six. There we go. All right. Things changed a little bit here, but that's okay, I guess. So the guards go. This one is its strength, or its um, sun. The rest of them just gain shield. So now it's the red guard's turn. Do we just bring this down here then, since this one's so likely to die? Yeah, I think so. Getting muddle on this is also nice for next turn. Also setting this one up to for the pain train. So you go down to seven. So then I'm going to do a move to jump shield self. I'm going to go to here. No, it's probably safer just to go to here. I guess I have my jump boots. Actually, there's no, no real cost of going here. Uh, oh, yeah. All this stuff is here, by the way. Yeah, also, I want to leave the spot open so that hatchet... I mean, I guess at the same time, I could actually get some money this way and just leave the favorite for the hatchet afterwards. Hatchet doesn't have the boots... So we can't make it there this turn no matter what. So it's always going to be next turn. And we're going to go before. Yeah, let's go here. The money seals the deal, right? Yeah, yeah. We deserve this money. We worked hard for this money. We deserve this money. Okay, so we go there. We're strengthened. We have one shield, which doesn't shouldn't matter. Don't think it can matter. We'll attack this archer. Hopefully this attack just kills. Yep. Sure, we also create fire. Okay. So we're done. It's another one of them dead. I don't think I've missed any. Thus far, I killed three guards. Yeah, two archers and a shaman. Okay. So we're done. Hatchet's up next. Well, they got a little bit more awkward, huh? 
My campaign with friends is doing scenario 81 this weekend for some reason. Oof. Fun with that. It's a shame this is adjacent. But, I mean, it's already a very good card, so whatever. So basically the question is, would we rather heal the red guard for one or make an attack two? And I think the answer is pretty obviously make an attack two. So, yeah, let's make an attack two range three with care package. Targeting you. Hmm. Sure. And we've got to move three with second wind. One, two, three to there. Uh, this is unfortunate, I guess, is the best way to put it. I'm not sure how exactly we're going to go about retrieving the favorite here without retrieval and safely, but I still think it does make sense to move up like this. Hmm. We're going after they can all move next round. Are we going to be tanking up? Yeah, we're going to be tanking up. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Uh, I'm very excited to tell the Spellweaver he's out of his element over and over. <laughs> nice. <laughs> Alright. Uh, there are no archers left. I look forward to hearing how how your Spellweaver <laughs> how much your, spell, your Spellweaver friend enjoyed that. Alright. Yeah, because we have fire here thanks to that nice flip. So just these two is pretty pretty easy line. What are we up to? So we have dark. So like, we can maybe just mess with this, send it into there and disarm it. And do a ranged heal. Do we have enough range to actually heal meaningfully? I mean, we're healing one of them, which is not best, but maybe that's fine. Ah, the initiative is too late is the issue there. Otherwise, how early is Hatchet going? 31? With Wicked Scratch plus the... Oh, I mean, I guess this is actually just taking him here. So we don't even need that much damage to kill him. Yeah, because we just do that super early. We put him down to 3. God, I love the Sand Devil. How does anyone hate on this card? Now, obviously, having this hazardous terrain here is kind of the dream, but still. He's the one that pushed us to do it. <laughs> yep. Yeah. Uh, so I guess we can just do like this and give a free curse then. Seems fine. All right, let's go. So the guards are doing some stuff I don't really care about. Nice. I mean, I guess it's unfortunate that we're going for all the shields here. Sand Devil MVP. Sand Devil was 100% the MVP of this scenario. There can be no doubt about it. Again, there was hazardous terrain, but still. But still. Gotcha. All right, so we're going to recreate fire mul multiple times here. We're going to gain one experience. So first we're going to use the Sand Devil, sorry. Sand Devil is going to take you to here and deal four more damage to you. I feel like really feel like people don't understand how good it is or how it fits with R Red Guard kit, but it's great. Yeah, like, I, I don't know. I played with this card a fair amount when we were doing the initial testing of this class, and I always found it to be amazing. And now I've played with it a little bit in the Jaws campaign and a little bit here. And, like, yeah, sure, it's not always amazing, but, like, I don't know. I mean, I feel like it's either good or amazing. It's basically never really a letdown. Like, I I, yeah, I, I feel like people just somehow don't. They're just like, ah, two damage a turn. But, like, all right. Even in its worst case, if you can play a persistent loss that basically the entire scenario does two, damage, direct, two direct damage a turn and muddles two enemies, which is, like, kind of the the lowest value you can get from this, that's still really good. <laughs> I mean, it's crazy to me that people will be like, yeah, like, all right, we can look at level four cards, right? So you could have the same person who's like, yeah, you know, I, I don't play the favorite so that I can play Overwatch, or I play the favorite and Overwatch, like, to play the bottom, right? They're like, yeah, this loss is so incredibly powerful. Man, attack two five times in a scenario that requires, like, something happening, but sure, whatever. Attack two five times is so incredibly powerful, but, like, all right. So that's like, I mean, all right, sure, like 15 damage in the course of a scenario for a loss on a class that's like a 9-card class. Red Guard doesn't have to be a 9-card class because you don't need to play Shield Spikes. So like here on a 10-card class, you get something like, all right, so if this does like minimum 2 damage a turn, which is, like, I think, a pretty reasonable average, if a scenario goes on to average 17, 18 rounds, not every turn is it dealing that amount of damage, but like even if it does damage just on 10 of the 18, 20 rounds, that's still 20 damage, and that's, like, not considering moving into traps, muddling, 
moving enemies around so they don't attack, counting as a trap so move, enemies can't move into it. Like, I don't know. It's insane to me that people like Overwatch is incredible. I mean, like, all right, that people overvalue other losses and then somehow are low on this. Yeah, yeah, for sure. If you're doing shield spikes, it does get worse. But I think people are also kind of low on shield spikes. So that's what gets weirder to me, right? So, yeah, CJ, like, did, I mean, I'm playing plus three difficulty on a very difficult scenario and I'm winning running both of these. So why can't I do this? I, I do agree that it is less common to run the two of these together. Certainly don't think you can. Um, all right. So the funny interaction with stun items and modifiers. You have one stun modifier, right? No, you have two stun modifiers. You can have two stun modifiers in a in an, a 16 card deck. So. A 2 out of 16, I mean, like, whatever. Not actually. A 2 out of 16, I mean, with advantage, 1 out of 50. I don't, I don't even know. I understand the one item, but this was a great scenario to do the both early. Yeah, absolutely. I think you're making a statistical mistake, though. You're responding to someone with an extreme opinion, not the average opinion. No, this, like, you you mean the, the opinion that I'm responding to, which is that Sand Devil isn't good, is that it? Is an, an extreme opinion. I think a lot of people are like, yeah, Sand Devil's not very good. I've seen a lot of people say that Sand Devil is one of the weaker cards. The one of the weaker fives. Yeah, this, I mean, like, I agree. This is definitely a great scenario to do both of these, without a doubt. And this is also not a representative scenario. This is, like, the high end for Sand Devil. But, um... I don't think you normally play both of these. But also, most people don't, like... I would say many more people say that Shield Spikes is not good than say Shield Spikes is good. So I think most people aren't playing this anyway. So it's weird that somehow there's an intersection between, like, I think the best justification for not playing Sand Devil is playing Shield Spikes. And if most people aren't playing Shield Spikes, but most people are also saying, from my experience and reading comments and stuff like that, that Sand Devil's also not very good, I like, I don't understand what the issue is. Well, yeah. So I talked about this earlier, CGO. I think Void Wardens is the best of the level fives by a significant margin because of the non-loss ability. Um, hatchets, I don't know. To me, hatchets and this are fine. Like hatchets and this are pretty equal, I guess. It's not that like I think people say that this just. It's not that I'm saying that this can be tied for second slash third of the fives and still be a very good card. I think I'm not so much talking about like the comparative analysis of this versus other level fives. I'm just saying that a lot of people say that this isn't very good and they're like, yeah, the card's fine. Cause it's a move five. I mean, we'll see, we'll continue to play with it in Gloomhaven and we'll, we'll continue to garner our test our hypothesis that it is in fact good, but uh, yeah. All right. Uh, so we have a move four here. Yeah. I mean, I've spent enough time moving shadows recently to understand that moving something two hexes when it isn't restricted by any sort of terrain is more than enough movement quite frequently. Two, three, four. Uh, can't. That's annoying. That is annoying. So we can never really deal more than two direct damage here. Well, that's fine whatever all right one two three four to here <clears throat> with the bottom flame shroud we do the top of barbaric instincts we do one direct damage to two targets i think that's better than attacking into retaliate here so yep guards go they have shield and retaliate sadly i set up all my shield they don't attack but you know i can't win them all Void Warden's up. So on the Void Warden, I'm going to use the bottom of Suggestion, Consuming Dark. We're going to recreate Dark anyway here, though. I'm going to go one, two, three, I guess. I'm going to give them a curse. And then I'm going to use the top of Wicked Scratch, creating Dark, gaining one experience, consuming Ice, and giving Hatchet an attack for a million with advantage. Okay. 
Okay, then hatchet goes. So on hatchet, I'm going to make a... Do I have range? Yes, I do. And attack three, range three. I suppose I'll attack number three. Yeah, nothing else special to use here. Oh, okay, sure. I mean, we love to see that when we throw the favorite, but can't always be picky. So we do five, and then we're just moved here, going to here, and finally recover the favorite. I don't know why I'm putting that here. I'm going to track it by having it out here. All right, and so that's the round. Let's just do this now before we forget for the new round. Should I have stamina potioned? Maybe. Probably. Probably should have. Oh well. Short rest. Hmm. Ooh. We don't have strength in anymore. I think I want that. Yeah, I think I want that. Oh god, no. <laughs> you son of a That's the card! That's the one! Mmm. So basically in my head right now, when I'm like, well, can I get away with this? I'm thinking, well, it's okay, because I can play Swift Strength bottom here, and I'll be fine. Yeah. Like, obviously, if I, if I know that I re-roll into that, I think I just accept that Burn Away the Dark goes away here. Because now we can't actually gain shield when hitting these enemies is the problem. All right, how can our allies help us out with this one? Well, I think we just keep short resting on Hatchet. That's a given. Mm, sure, I can lose Repeat Shot, I think. Let's see. Uh, am I going to be too low on attacks then? No, yeah, I cannot actually lose Repeat Shot. So what do I not want to lose more than Repeat Shot here? I, won't, I want to keep Ricochet more, and that's literally it. General CGO is so happy right now. Keep Ricochet more than Repeat Shot? Admittedly, we're, we're fighting. This is garbage time, you know. All right, no. That's slightly better to lose than repeat shot. Paying a life for losing it, uh, kind of a wash. I mean, admittedly, it's enhanced. It's enhanced ricochet. It is just an attack three on its base, is the thing now. All right. Um. Yeah. I mean, I think I want to do. Do we still have the? No, we don't have the sun powder anymore. This plus this. All right. I mean, I want to do this. This is why we kept it. So the question is, what do I get to play on a bottom here? Problem is, I can't play anything like meaningful. I don't have light. I can't get light created before I go. <sighs> Thirty-one initiative is risky. They flipped nothing right now. I see you've been swayed to accept the ricochet is superior. I've accepted an enhanced ricochet is superior. <laughs> I mean. It's more that, like, I still actually think that uh, Repeat Shot's actually better, but obviously once you add plus one damage to every Ricochet. God, I just don't have anything good to do here. And no real way to help. I mean, sort of. I can move here. I mean, I think I'm always doing this here and doing this. I think I do want to CC one of them. <sighs> this is probably the, s the best thing to do, but it's definitely not the safest. God, losing. I mean, it was so perfect for so many reasons, right? So brutal. So, so brutal. All right, let's just go before them. Let's not take any risks here. I think we're in an okay spot in this scenario, so there's no reason to... To get greedy. We'll make it work like this. Okay. Happy with my choice. So, certainly happy with that flip. More than anything. Alright. Uh, Red Guard's up first, actually. So that's cool. Um, I'm going to do the bottom of Barbaric Instincts. Okay, eight more Inox babies to Orphan. <laughs> Our enemies is like, yeah. No kidding. The scenario was brutal in that regard. 
Uh, yep, so we just move to there. I know I have the compass, but there's not really anything to do with it right here, I think. Default move, we use the top here, consuming fire. Gaining one experience, and we make an attack one that hits all of them. I'm going to take one retaliate. I'll just flip that now. I'll do bottom to top. Three, two, four, one. Nothing special to use on the attack. Nope. None of these advantage, sadly. A two, a zero, a two, a two. Two, two, two. Wound on all of them. Okay. So, I think on hatch... So there's an argument to, like, there's something to be gained by killing enemies, certainly. But at the same time, these are all ticking down, so it's maybe better to, like... Oh, also, I forgot to move this. I think this just goes up like this. Uh, at the same time, getting this over here does allow us to, like, start running through the line before we go there. Let's see. If I go here, then it's one, two... Yeah, whereas if I go here, it's one... Two, it's this, sort of the same. It's only one more movement to get to there, but here we get to run through more enemies. Sorry, I gotta blow my nose quickly. Sorry, just had to slightly turn up the heat. Are we the baddies? Yeah, this is definitely an are we the baddies scenario. Uh, yeah, I mean, so I, I still have to kill eight. So I have to kill all six of these plus two more spawns. So, yeah, I think it's fine to just hit these. I don't know that there's really any reason not to. I mean, we're going to be fighting these later. We're, like, engaged with these. But it's so easy to kite these enemies anyway. I think I'd rather just do more effective damage, and theoretically, by attacking the like by focusing these down with attacks, the wounds here will do more. I think it's more about like stamina at this point than tempo. So yeah, I'm gonna set a fancy hat. I'm gonna use ricochet. You don't have the goggles, so I'm gonna hit number six and then number two. Attack four, attack three. Okay, that's fine. We'll take those plus ones. So five and four. In X I'll go. One, two, three, four. Okay, Void Warden's up. So, yeah, I mean, this is for sure just... Yeah, because I can make them all attack into each other. Hmm. I can make three of them attack as a loss. They're attacking into shield. But they're also attacking into three retaliate. So how much is this actually doing? Execute order 66, yeah. I don't have my stamina potion anymore either. Hmm. Yeah, it's kind of awkward. I really don't want to play a loss this rec cycle because then I'm losing another turn. Like we're we're playing losses on the wrong rest cycles, right? If we do that. But it does represent... Alright, so each of the attacks does one damage, theoretically, plus one more from our bonus attack, because we have an element on something, yeah. So, it's like, yeah, one, 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 and two, so four damage there, and then plus six, nine retaliate. So it's a loss for 13 damage. Hmm. Again, it just doesn't really make sense. I'm not in a hurry. So let's just use the bottom resign frenzy as a move four. One, two, three, four, I think to here is fine. I don't know exactly where we're gonna like set up a choke. Maybe maybe we're not even supposed to be running over there. Yeah, but I kinda wanna send this one back into that, right? I mean I guess I could send this one back into that. It's probably fine as well. What is Redguard actually doing next turn, I guess is the question. Uh we don't have fire. I could just like strangle and chain one. I mean I guess we're Realistically, we're always playing one of these two cards each turn with one of these two cards each turn. I can also just like step back and heal at some point, but I guess we have like two reasonable tops, two reasonable bottoms, quite realistically. So we want to do this and then this. So we're not doing Strangling Chain next turn, so I guess we're doing like this plus this into this plus this. That's actually fine. So yeah, accordingly. Yeah, I think just moving to here is fine. And then we'll just send you back even further, I suppose. The further back you are, the better, simply because you're wounded. So you take four from that, and you're technically disarmed. 
And did I gain my 1 XP? Let me move this for a second to check. Did not. Alright, so 1 XP for consuming the dark on the top of Lure of the Void. End of the round. Can I get away with a long rest here then? Oh, we. Wait. Why are my boots back? I didn't ever long rest on this class, so I shouldn't have my boots back. I must have just misclicked it at some point. Did I not use my boots when I went to the room in the first place? Because of where we stopped? Oh, yeah, I didn't actually use my boots, did I? No, because we stopped here. Right? Yeah, I think we didn't use our boots. So we actually do have boots. Interesting. Interesting. So I don't really have a lot of reason to long rest. Now let's just short rest. It's pretty good. I think we don't lose that. I think we reroll. Mm. Well, we're certainly not getting our battle call here. <laughs> hey, what was Hatchets anyway? It was seven or fewer experience. We've gained what, like two? Uh, three? Okay. Yeah, I think we'll be alright over there. Okay, so it's this plus this. Uh, hatchet, what are you up to? I can heal myself. Probably better just to move, though. Well, if you did, I'm sure you'll hear about it in the YouTube comment. Yeah, I don't, I don't think I accidentally did that. I'm pretty sure I didn't use them, but yeah. Um, so, yeah, like something like this is fine here. And the next turn we can, I mean, we can get the favorite in something and then finish it off with a repeat shot next turn. Seems good. Hmm. Hmm. I think I like just stunning one of them here. I think that's just safest. Disarm one, stun one. Like, we disarm this one, we stun this one, this one hits. Even if we go after, then we stun one for next round. Seems good. Yeah, I think this seems good. Again, set up elements to do better stuff afterwards. Okay, sure. So red guard's up first. Uh, so I'm going to just do an attack two that creates... Oh, I guess we have the elements as well. We don't even have to... I forgot we would get these elements. Maybe we could have done gifted attacks. I kind of forgot about this. Oh, well, it doesn't really matter. Uh, yeah, we're at six enemies, which is the correct number, so we're going to use the top of this to make an attack to here. Oh, so for, sorry, first, this is going to get moved to here, which does one damage and muddles him. I'm not going to bother placing the muddle. Next up, we're going to attack this. Putting cards in the wrong spots again, yeah. Wouldn't be the first time, won't be the last. Hmm, nice. So we also created fire. I guess we're creating fire anyway. Hmm. But it's a plus two. So one, two, three, four. Disarm doesn't matter. And then we're going to do a move four. Um, but there's nowhere I really need to move, is there? For what I'm going to do next turn, we're just going to give something a little strangling. I mean, I guess I can just back up tight slightly, like this. Okay, these go. Lose that. One, one. One and one. Hatchets up next. So center mass, huh? So I want to hit something with this that I'm then going to hit the following turn with repeat shot. Yeah, sure. Let's just center mass this one, I guess. No goggles to use or anything like that. So no choices to be made, but we will throw the favorite. Is that you? Okay. So we do eight, putting it down to three. And then I will simply, so my initiative next turn, no, I can have 20 initiative. I guess I could go, I should have moved further with red guard, huh? Is void word, no, void word's not moving. I guess I will just heal myself. I actually am missing three health, so that's fine. So I think I'll just stay here because I don't want to get any closer to these. From here, I guess I can actually even step back. We've already drawn the minus two, haven't we? Yeah, we have. 
So I can even step back one, because then next turn I can do Rip from the Flesh, follow through. I guess then I'm further from picking up the favorite as well, though. These have three movement, typically. Yeah, so they shouldn't reach me. And if they get minus one movement, so they go two, but range two, no. So these have, like, one possibility of reaching me at plus one movement, but no, I think this is fine. I'm not even sure they can do plus one movement. It's been a while. I mean, almost everything can, so I assume they can. I just don't really remember them ever doing it, but guards are just memorable for not moving, not moving. So, all right, we'll just stay where we are, though. I think this is fine. So, Void Warden's up next. I'm going to consume the dark to give a stun. I'm going to recreate the dark so the dark's just staying there. I'm going to make an attack four, range three. I'm going to hit the one with more health because I don't necessarily want to kill one. Guards have a plus, uh, so it is the 30 is the plus move. Yeah, that makes sense. All right, we're attacking number two. Sure. So, we do five damage. Five, and give them a curse. And then that's also the one that I will stun. Yeah, I don't I don't find that super threatening. Like worst case scenario, even if they were to do it, one of them would be here. We'll be alright. All right, play the cards, do the things. For you, we've already mapped out what we're doing. Playing these two, I'd rather keep repeat shot than follow through. Both kill. Enemy deck gets so jacked up after a while with Void Warden. Yeah. Yeah, it does. All right, so what is the Void Warden up to then? Continuing to carry the scenario like we always do. I mean, yeah, we can gift an attack there and gift an attack here. And just... I guess the issue is an initiative, then? Maybe it's, yeah, better just to gift an attack earlier. Just to make sure we kill the one that's not stunned here. And worry about being greedy later. Yep, that seems fine. So, we still haven't killed one, so red guard's up first. So guards, minus one move, so two to there. <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hmm. Hmm. So I guess we're always killing this one. This one can't always make it to us unless, yeah. Now, so what actually makes sense is to just bring this one over here, doing one damage to this. And muddling it, but that doesn't matter, it's stunned. Because now, if we kill this one, um, this one won't come here. <laughs> I mean, it'll just go to there. God, I love this, uh, this ability. All right, yeah, that works. So we move that there, and I guess I could just heal myself instead of attacking here, since the Void Warden gives us the kill. A little bit of health is kind of useful, I think. Yeah, it's probably fine. It's probably fine. I mean, because this attack with Wicked Scratch should always kill here. Like, and doing a Strangling Chain attack here, it's fine. But at the same time, with all the Retaliate that we're going to take, I think just if we have the opportunity to do a bit of healing, it's probably worth it. Also, we gain experience. So let's just do the top of Healing Sands here. Oh, wait, do we have Fire? We do. But no one else will be attacking our Strangling Chain target. So it doesn't really matter that much. Yeah, let's just heal for four here. Also makes it so much safer for us to long rest next turn, which I like. And I'm going to move and immobilize both of them. This doesn't really matter. Okay, Hatchet's up next. So I'm going to start by doing the top of follow-through, gaining one experience. Got to watch out for that. Making an attack four, targeting you. Okay, killed you. Favorite drops there. Kill counter's up one. Oh, I think we missed... No, we didn't miss a kill counter. Yeah, we just moved that one. All right, and then I'm going to do this, uh, gaining another experience. I'm going to heal myself for three and strike them myself. So do I have a stamina potion still? I do, so I could look to stamina potion this turn here, since I have strengthen. So the guards have minus one movement, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, so they're moving up, like, let's see. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four, five. Yes. So it's going to be like here. So I could do repeat shot plus sort of anything. <laughs> mm, 
Yeah. The bottom attacks aren't that good, is the thing. I mean, they're they're fine. I mean, I guess if you can consistently create elements, it could be funny. Um. Yeah, I mean, I think I'm supposed to stamina push in here. The question is just like, what am I supposed to do with it? What am I supposed to get back? So, Fancy Hat is okay to just kill one of them, but I think I actually am just going to get back Ricochet here and just use Repeat Shot for a bottom default move. Oh god, the disrespect towards Repeat Shot here. CGO has won. We have Repeat Shot in hand, we're, we're stamina pushing back Ricochet just to uh, just so we can play Repeat Shot as a default move. The thing is more that like this scenario it's difficult to recover the favorite, so we don't get to use the favorite on targets very often. This is like kind of unusual fighting. And more than anything here, all that matters is just the total outgoing damage, not killing individual targets. It's a rather unique scenario. That's true. All right. So Void Warden's up next. I'm going to begin by... Uh, well, I'm going to use the old dark. I'm going to create a new dark, just to be clear. Gaining one experience, gifting an attack, five with advantage, performed by the red guard, targeting this guard here. Targeting the not red guard, the dead guard. So this is the last one that drops a coin? Nope, not even. All right, and then we do a move three. Where do I want to go? Which, like, here is fine. Be a bit more central. Sure. Yeah, this will be in range three anyway. Yep. And give them another curse. Okay. Do we gain our experience there? I imagine we did. I almost always remember to gain it. Yep, I did. Nice. What's our thing again, though? Max HP. Always monsters. Okay, so the guards go. So woundy, woundy. So this one just goes to here, focuses there, can't move through this. Well, it doesn't want to move that, I should say. This one also takes one from its wound, loses its stun. Strengthen, strengthen, strengthen. One, two, one, two. Ah, picked up the favorite. Ugh, that's annoying. I hate when the enemies pick up my favorite. No, it's there. It's not, it's not yours. There we go. It's not yours to keep. All right, so like this. Long rest here looks good on the red guard. Again, it's just kind of about longevity here. And tanking some attacks is not bad. One, two, so we'll we'll get attacked by both of them. We'll get to use some free shield for some free shield spikes damage. Okay. So I have dark. I want to do this bottom. I guess I want to do this top. No one will be next to me. Well, Hatchet can move next to me. Yeah, this seems fine. Let's just be greedy. Let's just max some greed here. I think that's. I think it's fine to do that. I don't care too much about disarming an enemy here. I'd rather just do all the damage right now. I mean, I guess will I have someone in range to deal damage to? Yeah, I will. I definitely will. All right. Sure. Standard stuff from them. So Hatchet's up first. I'm going to use the top of Ricochet to do an attack three and attack two. I'm going to hit... Uh, number four and then number 12. Okay. And then number 12. Oh, God. Nice. Uh, oh, crap. Nope. Nope. I was strengthened. Can I choose? Can I get rid of the strength then? Uh, so no matter what. Oh, that's so much worse. The strength then actually hurt me here. <laughs> Brutal. Uh, so you're actually back up to there. Yeah, I just done five to you. All right. So, oh, no. Remove strengthen. Remove strength. All right. So then I got to make the strengthen attack on the second one now. Yeah. So well, I mean, I guess whatever. We got one less damage in the end. It's muddled. It's not really necessary to place it, but sure. Yeah. Okay. So then I'm gonna use the bottom of repeat shot as a default move too. I'm just gonna go to here. All right. The guards go. This one dies to its wound. Oh, I was supposed to spawn another one here this round. Whoops. Not that that matters that much yet. All right, so hold on. Let's do things in the correct order. 
Uh, yeah, I can just do this, this one dying now. I'll do these in a second down here, but this one dies. Counter goes up. Hey, Roichi Viv. Thanks for the follow. Glad you're enjoying the stream. Can you choose which of those modifiers to apply under JOTL ambiguity rules? Um, yes. Uh, no. No, here you could not. There's no ambiguity here. Right? Or is there? No, no, no. Because numerically, I mean, like, I believe this is not ambiguous. Ambiguity is just when you have two different unequal values, but this is just a numerically higher value. The added effect does make things weird, but I don't believe you should be able to choose two. I believe you just choose the plus two. You, you just get the plus two here. I believe this is not... Because this isn't... I don't believe this is actually considered ambiguous, is it? Right, exactly like General CGO said. Like, yeah, that, that does make sense as ambiguous, but this is not. Why do you prefer playing three characters? Yeah, this is plus two versus undefined versus one. Yep, exactly. Oh, at the plus two and crit? Are the, the crit and plus three? No, that's not ambiguous either. Because crit is always just mathed out. I mean, it's always just considered mathematically. Um, crit was a plus three. I mean, I guess, oh, technically you could choose. It's not actually ambiguous. It's just they're the same. Both of them are plus threes. I don't think you get to choose. I think you just get one of them. I don't know that it actually matters, though, because either way, it's a plus three, and there's no different way about it. Crits are always just considered mathematically. Uh, why do you prefer playing three characters instead of two or four? Three characters is more manageable than four characters for me, by a significant margin. So it just it's less taxing mentally and allows for slightly faster game or significantly faster gameplay on my part, which is more entertaining. And two characters is just a little bit more... I mean, scenarios are a little bit more cheesy with two characters. Like, the difference, like, the way you play a scenario is a lot different between two and three, and is less different than between three and four, because of monster counts and stuff like that. Three, I think, gives a more balanced version of scenarios, whereas two gives, like, very specific versions of scenarios where you uh, try to, like, I mean, I don't know, there are less enemies, you dance around enemies, stuff like shielding, AoEs, stuff like that matters less. Single target CC is even better. One day, I'll have to make sure to pay full attention. I actually didn't know what the attack value was. Gotcha. No worries. Okay. So, we did these things. Well, no, we did this, which died. I'll just do these as well. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four, five. So, even if, yeah. So, no matter what. And this one. All right. So, you go to here. Lose both of these. You, it's one, two, three, four. Well, all right, now I'll do these to deal with this. Well, let's just do the moves, I guess. So this will go to here, and we'll be hitting here. Both of these will be hitting there, that's fine. So then you will consider 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. Yep. At least this one didn't pick it up. All right, so then both of these take a damage from the wound. The first one will attack with advantage. Hmm. I mean, it's just a uh, plus zero. So... We have two shield here on an attack for four, so we take two and it takes two. And then this one, minus one, so we take three. Sure. Yeah, numerical value is correct. So then the void warden's up. All right, so what are we up to here? Um. Well, poison is most valuable on one that has more health, so let's put it here. So I'll make you take two damage. I will consume no elements whatsoever. Oh, I have dark, which I can consume on one of the attacks. Hmm. Probably better to consume on the second attack, actually, I think. So I will not use an element on this attack. So this will just be poison here, and hatchet makes an attack four with advantage. Hmm. So five. And then we're going to use the bottom. Uh, so this, we do create dark. We're going to use the use the dark now on the sand fast attack. So I'm now going to have. We're going to no longer have this. I think it's better to have advantages than take one retaliate. I mean, I guess. Yeah. Plus, my deck has a bunch of curses in it. I don't really want to attack without advantage. So let's have hatchet attack. So this is going to be attack four with advantage. Let's attack number two here. Okay. I guess I knew exactly what was left in my deck at that point, hilariously enough. Sure. So you're dead. 
Another one down. Okay. I guess maybe I should have attacked here. This had less health though, but this I could have carried this with a sand devil. This was supposed to be weed referring to riding the sand devil around. Yeah, I understand. Yeah, I, I did mess up by attacking this one. I kind of forgot about the sand devil, but I mean, it's also fine, I think. It's fine, we're fine. All right, so then the sand devil goes here, puts this down to three. And mumbles it. All right, we're gonna play these cards, see what we do. Get our long rest. I'm so tired, guys. I'm sorry. And we heal for two here. All right, beginning of the round, we're gonna get another one of you up there. We need to kill four more, so these three, I mean, every if we kill everything that's on the board, now we win. All right, well, we actually managed the scenario shockingly better than if possible. All, again, really thanks to Sand Devil. I mean, it's not over yet, but it's looking pretty good from here. Uh, can I even get away with a long rest and hatchet here? There's just no reason to. It's just too greedy. Sure, it's great to lose, actually. You know what's great, everyone? Is not caring at all about the chest in this scenario. By the virtue of not caring about this chest, it also makes it much easier for me to just beat the scenario. All right. So, Void Warden is presumably... I don't know. I mean, actually, we're probably going to, like, you know, just disarm... It's weird. I guess I need Red Guard to go a little bit earlier. I also have to choose a card to lose still on Red Guard. Uh, at this point, I think we can just get rid of this. We got enough health. Should be fine. Not opening the spawning room? No. No reason to open the spawning room. Can we do... Oh yeah, we can... We can definitely ricochet combo these two down. I mean, I guess I don't need to... Yeah, I should actually just do like this and this, huh? This looks good. Because this is already an attack four here, so I'd rather just do the bottom heal. Maybe heal up the Void Warden, try to get her to full to satisfy her, her battle goal. Yeah. I should do that before attacking, though, because I don't want to gain any more experience. Okay. Um. So what are we up to, then? It would be good if we kill this one, I guess, then. And just move the sand devil up this way. I feel like this is not too difficult, presumably. And then just do a default move, too. Yeah, I'm just going to do this card for initiative and strangling chain to attack. Looks good. All right. So, red guard's up first. I'm just going to move the devil this way. Well, I guess where are these enemies going? All right, let's pay attention. I guess you're actually going to come down here, aren't you? So, in fact, I'm going to move the devil like this. Okay, then I'm going to go, I'm going to use the top of Strangling Chain as an attack three, targeting this enemy here. Okay, perfect. And then I'm going to do the bottom of Barbaric Instincts, and I'm simply going to move to here, because you have minus one movement, if I'm not mistaken, on your normally three movement, so you'll be there. Yep, perfect. Okay, so then Hatchet goes. So I'm first going to use the bottom of Rift from the Flesh to do a heal three, creating wind on the Void Warden. Putting up to six. And then I'm going to do the top of Ricochet, I'm going to attack you with a four and then you with a two. Okay, four still kills with three, beautiful. And the back one, three. So one, two, three, and you die. Also, no, I did just spawn one, yes. Okay, and we're done there. So here, I have dark, I have a move four and some disarm stuff. Yeah, sure. So let's just do our move four going to here. Get some coins. And then I'm going to use the top of Lure of the Void, consuming dark, gaining one experience. I'm going to force a target to perform move three and disarm them. So you're one, two, three to there, one, two, three to here. But of course, um, 
lower initiative. So I make you move one, two, three to here, and thus you take four damage and you are disarmed. All right, so the guards go. So you go to there and you go to here. And lose your disarm. End of the round. All right. Discard, discard. So I'm going to long rest with the Void Warden here with the goal of just healing myself up back up to full to get my check marks. So what is this again? Have one or more monsters present at the beginning of every round. Yeah, I mean, from here on, it's not possible for us to not do that. All right. Um, do a little double disarm. I know they can go before me. If they go before me, they go before me. I've got plenty of life. I'll be fine. Before or after, either one of these is okay. Um, so I need to move to there at least to attack. I guess I'll attack with this and move with this. Oh, we even have wins. So we can even move a bit further if we want to. Perfect. And you long rest. Well, did it twice, but that's okay. Ah, guard's going just before, but that's also okay. So we need to make another guard, of course. Of course, of course. Hmm. I guess the annoyance now is that the Void Warden is going to get hit. I don't want the Void Warden getting hit, because we're trying to heal the Void Warden up. But we can manage that. All right, so on Hatchet, I'm going to use the bottom of Follow Through, Consuming Wind, to do a move two and then a move two. One, two, one, two, like so. So we get hit, which is fine. And then I'm going to use the top of Center Mass to make an attack four. And I'm just going to hit the one that's nine life. So seven. Putting him down to two. Okay. Beautiful. Yeah, and we're done. So then the guards go. So you're going to go to here. And you're going to go to here. It's going to be attack here, attack here, attack here. So first on the red guard, plus one. So. Yeah, I can, yeah. All right. So this is normally attacking at minus one. So normally it was attacking for four. Here, I guess I should zoom in the picture. Ah, we're almost done with the scenario. Well, we can zoom in the picture in picture anyway. Sorry, I've kind of been forgetting about it. Like that is fine for the end. Uh, okay, so minus one plus one. So this ends up being an attack four. So I'll use both of my shield abilities here. This and this to mitigate two and take two. So two damage back to you with shield spikes and two damage to me. And then this one will attack me. I'd like him not to miss. Ooh, okay, that's not a miss. So that's a five. So we get one here. So we take four. And this takes one. And Oh, no, that was the plus two here. Crap, 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 crap. All right. Uh, so plus two here was five damage here. All right, I can just adjust. All right, so plus one. So we just have one more life here. Easy. I want to go to that. I love that that quote. It's not I want to go to that. It's I, I want to go to there, isn't it? If assuming we're talking about the Liz Lemon, I mean we're referencing Liz Lemon here. Okay, so red guards up. So what that means is it's sand time. So sand kills you and goes here. I'm not going to bother muddling you because you're getting disarmed anyway. I mean, uh, I guess whatever. Let's give the Sand Devil its due. We're up to 14. Working on my night cheese. <laughs> nice. <laughs> All right. Um, so. Yeah. I mean, I'm going to take a Retaliate. This is fine. This is the best way to be able to do that. Well, actually, no, it's not. It is there. Yeah, that's what I thought. All right, so I'm going to use the compass, actually. I'm too tired to name properly. <laughs> to move this to here, actually, to take four damage. This way I don't get Retaliated as well, which is nice. And then I'm going to do this, creating Dark and Ice to make an attack two, disarm, targeting this one here. Draw, plus one, so three. And disarmed. And then I'm going to use the bottom of Burn Away the Dark to do a move to disarm target one adjacent enemy, going to here. And disarming here as well. 
All right, and then we end the round. We get to heal for two. Nothing to refresh, but the healing was the important part. Man, we're actually going to beat Scenario 3 on plus 3 difficulty and get a large, like, with a fair amount of margin, all because of Sand Devil. Also, I should have stayed on Potion Deer, but oh well. Actually, I'm the last one to go, so I actually can. Uh, what do I want back? It doesn't matter too much. Just these two elements. Um, sure, I'll just be like Strangler Chain back. Yeah, we've got these two cards to play. This will be fine. Here, I just need to choose a card to lose. Um, I don't really care about this anymore. Also, we need to place another guard. Apparently, it's an actual Tina Fey thing. Oh, it's it. An actual thing Tina Fey's kid said. Ah, okay, that's where she got it from. <laughs> nice. I love Tina Fey, she's amazing. I thought you don't play a Finnish Lawrence on plus three. Touche. Touche. Alright, so we should have healed for two as well, which we already did. So the only thing that I absolutely have to do here is do this. And I guess I can just like play a loss for some experience, right? Sure. We always like Void Warden experience. And thus we just play these two cards. And we start the round. Alright. So, Red Guard goes. I'm going to do an attack three with Strangling Chain. Attacking here. Miss. Take one Retaliate. This is Strangled and Immobilized, therefore. Oh, sorry. First, my thing got to go. Um, so, I guess I would have just moved it to here. Deal, dealt one more damage here. Boom. All right, that's my top, and for a bottom, I'm going to move and create fire. It doesn't really matter where I go. I'll just move up to here, though. I guess, hold on, hold on, hold on. Let's not be dumb. Yeah, two coin stack there? Yeah, 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 okay. Sure. So we'll take four damage going down to one. One, two, three, four. I am a bit tired, but let's not be careless. Two coin stack is a two coin stack, right? Okay, so we're done. So Hatchet's up next. I'm going to use... Can we do the loss? Oh, but I don't want experience, but I'm actually fine. I'm only at five, so yes, I can gain two experience precisely. So I'm going to use the bottom of repeat shot, gaining one experience. I'm going to make an attack five, range three, targeting this guard here. Plus zero, five damage exactly. Well, plus one from the Strangler Chain, so it's dead. That's 15, and then I'm going to use the top of this, so it's we can gain seven or less, right? Gain seven or fewer, yes. Perfect. So I'm going to use one more experience, playing both of these for loss. I get to do a move three, shield two. And I'm going to go to here, because I don't want the Void Warden getting hit. I'm going his money, indeed. All right, and then the Void Warden goes. I'm going to just heal myself for two here, putting myself back up to full. And I'm going to do the top of Suggestion. I have Ice, so an enemy within range 4. I'm not going to bother flipping all the stuff here. It really doesn't matter. 1, 2, 3, 4. So I can target this one. I have Ice to consume. Let's just make things as simple as possible for everyone. So I'm going to make this do a move and attack. I'm not going to do anything with its move and attack. I'm just going to stun it so that it doesn't act. And primarily, I'm gaining 2 experience here. Up to 13. All right. Whew. I mean, we beat a, a hard scenario on plus 3 difficulty after getting demolished earlier. My confidence was honestly shaken after the previous scenario, but yeah, I don't know. The strategy, like, I don't know. I mean, we did get pretty lucky. The, the archer spent a number of turns back here attacking no one. And then I might even miss one of attack because it's possible the archer should have made an attack one turn where it didn't. No, I think they were attacking at minus one range, so it didn't. I think we did make the attack the first turn. But yeah, I mean, the shaman coming up to the very front, the archer staying back and not attacking. Like, we, we sort of got the luckiest possible way I mean, organization we could have with how we fought the enemies, being able to single out the shaman and kill it quickly, and then having the archers not hit us for a while. But, I mean, we also had a fair amount of margin here, so I think we could have gotten even a little bit less lucky. Ultimately, at the end of the day, like, I think if we had a level 4 red guard instead of a level 5 red guard, we may actually just not have beat this scenario. I honestly think Sand Devil did that much. I mean, Sand Devil had to have done 30 damage or something this scenario. I mean, maybe that's a bit high. Definitely in the 20s, in addition to adding some muddles and moving things around. Who knew this was an actual one-room scenario? Well, it technically wasn't. We opened a second door. 
but yeah, yeah, that was sweet. That was very satisfying. It's a great showcase to Sand Devil. All right, uh, scenario one. Speaking of, we'll bring that back over here. All right, uh, so let me get rid of hide this temporarily. Oops, no, it's this that I want to hide. So we got a check mark here, two check marks here, and two check marks here, which is good since we lost check marks on the way here. Yeah, yeah. yeah the typically the optimal strategy for this scenario on high difficulties is always to hide in this room or this room to draw the enemies up. Yeah, no kidding. I mean, I, I think this is how you're supposed to play it, though, when playing it at a challenging difficulty, ultimately. All right, so let's hit our check marks. So it's one here, two here, ooh, and two here. All right, I'll just go ahead. I mean, I'm not going to do the level up. So Hatchet did, all right, uh, yeah, it, it should have given us the appropriate amount of experience, right? Yes. Um, so Hatchet will have leveled up to level 5. We'll get to do that next week. And Void Warden leveled up to level 6, which is exciting as well. Um, I can actually do the... No, no, it doesn't make any sense to do one of the level ups now and the other. It's just going to make it more confusing for me. So I'm going to wait for the Hatchet level up again, precisely because this will allow people who don't want to be spoiled for level 5 plus Hatchet to not have to watch this, right? So we'll add that next week. Um, just to, like not add this spoiler unnecessarily at the end of the scenario. Oh yeah, well, also what do we get for beating this? Oh, plus one prosperity, 15 gold each, party achievement, and unlock some new scenarios. All right, so we unlocked eight and nine. Nine is here. Eight is a scenario we can't even do anymore, unfortunately. Or can we? No, actually we haven't. Actually, I think we still can do eight. We'll have to figure that out. Uh, we gain one prosperity, which puts us very close to what we need to do 27. And 15 gold each, which is always welcome. Uh, 172, 87, and ooh, we're getting so we're actually over the threshold now, right? So we can, we're good. We just need the prosperity. You should have level five plus in the stream title. You still can, yeah. Uh, in the VOD title, I mean, it is in the stream title, right? Oh, you already have level 5 plus... Sorry, 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 sorry. Just like to see that one. Should be able to do 8. Yeah, 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 I still can. I, I normally hit, but yeah, I definitely can still do 8. Um, no, the, so I know I have level plus, 5 plus in the stream title. I'm more thinking of the VOD, basically. Uh, that people watching the VOD, like, that way I don't... If I were to put the... If I were to do the... The hatchet stuff at the end now, I would have to put it the VOD that it includes hatchet level 5 plus, which is ridiculous, which is a bit silly if it's at the very end. You understand? It makes more sense for it to be at the beginning. All right, so let's just go ahead and grab our one check mark here. I mean, our one perk here from our check marks, which is easy enough. Another minus one out. And another plus two fire in. Yeah, Hatchet's pretty rich, huh? 172 gold there, not bad. It's just the, the lack of enhancements on these characters is going to stifle our progress a bit on higher difficulty levels. Um, okay, so I think there was nothing else I need to do post-scenario here for the VOD, so I can cut the VOD now. Thanks for everyone watching, or who watched this VOD, and uh, yeah, well, I mean, more VODs coming soon-ish.